will never be able to go back to him in his pathetic little body, I moaned with my new lover. I am here to dump my feelings after what my husband did to me and my lover after finding out about our affair. I don't think it was fair on his part to treat us this way, even though we were wrong. I did not know that my husband could turn into such a beast and become a completely different person. I feel overwhelmed by the betrayal and hurt caused by his actions. I never expected him to react in such a violent and aggressive manner, making me question everything about our relationship. My name is Adeline, age 37, married to James, age 41, for 12 years. We have a 10-year-old and our life has taken a 360 after having a baby. We had been a compatible couple, but we were never a lovey-dovey one. We had been quite practical in our approach towards our marriage. We never were the kind of people who liked showing affection, and as it was a very convenient marriage, we never once thought of ourselves as the romantic type anyway. Our focus has always been on building a stable and secure life for our family. However, after having a baby, I realized the importance of nurturing our relationship and making time for each other amidst the chaos of parenthood. I could see how having a loving partner would have helped me deal with postpartum and all the new changes in my life. I tried to reason with James about how I was feeling and how maybe a little support from him could help me get out of the rut I was in. We had a very long conversation about it, and even after explaining to him that I was feeling so lost and lonely, James said that our relationship had always been lacking affection, so he suddenly could not become a romantic. I felt hurt and disappointed by his response, as I had hoped for understanding and comfort during a difficult time. It became clear to me that our relationship was not meeting my emotional needs, leading me to reevaluate what I truly needed in a partner. I realized very soon after becoming a mother that I should be expecting minimal support from James in raising our baby and expecting him to be an available father. It was as if I was a one-man show being responsible for everything around the house. I was always tired and exhausted and felt like I was a hamster on a wheel, always trying to catch up but never reaching a destination. I tried to communicate my feelings and needs to James but it seemed like he was not willing to change or provide more support. Eventually, I had to accept that I needed to prioritize self-care and seek out other sources of support in order to maintain my own well-being while caring for our baby. He told me that earning a living is not something easy and I should be grateful that I did not have to do that as well. He was providing for the family and that should be his greatest contribution. I was both shocked and dumbstruck at his high ground that he had taken just by earning a living. I had decided after that day that I would never share my feelings with James anymore. If this was the response I would be getting, then it was better to talk to a shrink than to expect James to understand. It had been two years raising a kid on my own, and as usual, James was just our cash machine in all these years. I realized that relying on James for emotional support was not realistic and seeking professional help might be a better option for me. Despite his financial contributions, I needed more than just financial assistance to navigate the challenges of single parenthood. I went out to meet my friends after a long time. It was like some sort of a reunion to catch up with everyone after college to know what everyone was up to. I was really excited to meet and know what had been happening in everyone else's lives. I had been living under a rock after my marriage and this looked like a good enough reason to get out of the house. As we sat down and started sharing stories, I realized how much I had missed these moments of laughter and connection. It felt refreshing to be surrounded by familiar faces and hear about all the adventures my friends had been on since we last met. I was the sexy and cool person in college, but now I could see that everyone was independent and confident. I felt very small when I said that all I did was get married and have a kid. Everyone was shocked to see the way they mocked me and told me that I was just throwing away my life. I looked much older than I actually was. They all talked about how supportive their husbands and partners were who helped them with house chores and raising the kids. They asked me if James was an available partner. I lied through my teeth about him being super supportive and always understanding of my needs. Deep down, I knew the truth about my relationship with James, but I couldn't bear to admit it to myself, let alone to these judgmental women. My facade of a perfect marriage was beginning to crack under the weight of their expectations. After coming home, I cried my eyes out, reliving the pain and how I was just throwing my life away. 
I decided to take matters into my own hands when our son turned three. I put him into a boarding school and decided to focus on my own self. I was 30, but I looked like 50 and felt like I was 60 years old. I realized that I needed to prioritize my mental and physical well-being in order to be the best parent for my son. Taking that step was difficult, but ultimately necessary for both of us to thrive. I knew that James would just agree to anything I said about how to bring up our kid. I felt like he did not even want to have this child, but he had no choice, as we got to know about me being pregnant too late, and there was nothing we could do about it. I did not know if that was the reason why he was so disconnected with our son. I had a discussion with James, and I made it clear to him that either our son goes into a boarding school, or he would have to help in homeschooling him. I knew that James would never be willing to take the latter option. I portrayed to him that as he was the intelligent one among the two of us, he should be the one helping in teaching life lessons to our child. I knew that this would work like a charm and help him let me decide what was best for our son. Finally, James gave in and told me to do what I think is best for him and his future. I was relieved that James had agreed to my plan, knowing that our son's education and well-being were in good hands. With his support, I could now confidently make the decision to enroll our son in a boarding school for a more structured and focused learning environment. I was happy to have accomplished the first step in changing my life. Now it was time for me to use my education and find a job to be independent. I decided to do it in secret without James getting to know about it. Once I got a job, that is when I decided to break the news to him. I wanted to see that shocked expression on his face when he would realize that he was not the sole bread earner in the family. I wanted to prove to him that I was better than him. I could take care of the house and also earn money at the same time. I wanted to show him that I was capable of contributing financially and not just relying on him. It was important for me to establish my own independence and show him that I could be successful on my own terms. It was a difficult task to find a job, but I was determined to do it. After a few lows and no responses, I finally heard from a small company who was willing to hire me even without experience. I was jumping with joy after finishing the call with them. Finally, I would be able to be independent and on my own after such a long time. I eagerly accepted the job offer and began preparing for my new role with enthusiasm. This opportunity was a stepping stone towards achieving my long-term career goals. After all the documentation was in place, I told James about me starting to work as I had a lot of free time now with our son at boarding school. He definitely looked shocked at my sudden news. Very soon, he changed his expressions and told me that he was glad and happy that I was trying to become independent. I could clearly see that he was not very happy with it, but he also knew that he had no say in any of this. I assured him that I would still be available to help out with our son whenever needed, and that this new job would only enhance our family's financial stability. James eventually came around and offered his support, recognizing the importance of my personal growth and career development. I taunted him by saying that I knew my responsibilities and I knew how to juggle multiple things at the same time, unlike a few other people I knew. As soon as I started working, I realized how much I missed being myself and dressing up. I felt confident and strong. I could see the boost in morale working gave me and within a few months, I became a part of my team who relied on me in making important decisions. I felt like I belonged here. Being with James did not bring as much joy in my life as being at work. I enjoyed being heard and valued. My feelings and opinions mattered, and that was something that had not happened to me in a long time. I found fulfillment in my career that I hadn't experienced before, and it made me realize the importance of pursuing my own passions and goals. This newfound sense of purpose brought a sense of contentment and satisfaction that I had been missing in my personal life. One of my colleagues at work had suggested that I join a gym that would help me be both mentally and physically at my peak performance. I told her that I would think about it and let her know. She said that I would look even younger once I started working out, which made me think that maybe this would be another addition to my daily routine, which could help me stay as out of sight from James as possible. I ultimately decided to give it a try and signed up for a gym membership. I realized that not only did it improve my physical health, but also gave me a much needed mental break from work stress. James had suddenly started complaining about food and me not being able to keep up with the house chores. I told him that now that I had my hands full, 
It would be better if he would try to take care of his things at least to keep up with the work piling on for the weekends. He looked irritated when I suggested he do a little work around the house. I was ready to flip at him if he would try to argue about it. It was not just my house. It was his as well. He had every right to keep it clean. I was no more the docile housewife who would just shut up and listen to everything thrown her way. I needed him to step up and take responsibility for his share of the household chores. If he wanted a clean and organized home, he needed to contribute just as much as I did. It was time for him to realize that we were equal partners in this relationship. I did not enjoy going to the gym and was about to quit it, but the thought of James made me be remotivated to start gym again after being frustrated with James. This is when my life took a drastic turn. In a few weeks, I started dating this young guy who I met in the gym. Initially, it was just harmless flirting that we enjoyed. I could see that every day when I walked in, he would check my body, and I enjoyed the way he could not take his eyes off my body. Initially, it was just a thrill that I enjoyed with the way he looked at me. But as we spent more time together, I realized there was a genuine connection beyond physical attraction. Our conversations were deep and meaningful, and I found myself opening up to him in ways I never had before. This unexpected relationship with him helped me see that sometimes the best things in life come when you least expect them. He was very different from James. He laughed at my jokes and tried to understand if I had something to say. I enjoyed being with him, and my weekends were dedicated to spending time with him. I knew that being at home with James would only drain me out, so I made sure to stay as occupied as possible. I appreciated his genuine interest in me and our conversations, which made me feel valued and understood. It was a refreshing change from the draining dynamic I had experienced with James, and I looked forward to our time together. We went out clubbing one day, and we were so drunk. Things got a little out of hand as we started making out in the club itself. We could not resist keeping our hands off of each other and made our way to the washrooms where we made out. I felt like I was back in college doing silly things. It was so much fun though. I felt alive and did something crazy after such a long time that it felt really awesome. The thrill of being spontaneous and carefree was exhilarating and it brought back a sense of youthfulness and excitement. It was a night to remember, full of laughter and unforgettable memories. After that day, our relationship had taken a turn, and we were no longer just looking at each other's body and enjoying it from a distance. We would make out at any chance we got, either at the gym, in the changing rooms or shower, or even in the car. We could not stop touching each other every time we met. I could feel that I was slowly falling for this guy. He was the kind of person I wanted in my life, who was supportive and loved me both physically and emotionally. Our connection went beyond just physical attraction, and I found myself opening up to him in ways I never had before. It was clear that our bond was deepening, and I couldn't deny the growing feelings I had for him. James had texted me one day that he would be out for a meeting which would take him too long. It was a long drive back home, so he would just sleep in at the hotel and get back home the next day. I knew James hated driving at night, so it was something he would have done. I decided to use this time to my advantage and call Ray, my lover home for a sleepover. We never ever spent a day in a decent bed. It was always cramped up spaces where we made out. I was super thrilled to spend an entire night with Ray in a bed, and that too in my own house. I spoke to Ray and asked him to come to meet me in the evening so that we could have a romantic getaway at my place. He looked equally enthusiastic about it and could not wait to be with me. I ordered food as I did not want to bother with cooking and waste time and all the unnecessary stuff. I made sure to pull out my best sexy outfit to entice him once he came home. We both pounced on each other once he rang the doorbell. I was wearing a transparent lingerie set with a caftan that showed almost everything. We both started making wild love and dashing every wall on our way to the sofa. Our passion and desire for each other were undeniable as we lost ourselves in the moment letting go of all inhibitions. The evening turned into a steamy and unforgettable night of pure bliss. Once we were done with our first round of sex and our stomachs were growling, we decided to eat some food and go on for another steamy session. I turned off the alarms and the doorbells as I did not want anyone to disturb us till late in the afternoon tomorrow. We moved our romance to our bedroom 
where I decorated the entire room into a passionate honeymoon suite. It had handcuffs and other items that could help us enhance our experience for the night. As we indulged in our second round of passion, the room transformed into a haven of desire and intimacy. The night was filled with exploration and excitement as we continued to deepen our connection. Once we were done and exhausted, we made our way to the bathroom where I had prepared the bathtub with bath bombs and wine so that we could experience everything in just one night. I did not want to leave any of the experiences until next time. We were both in the bathtub and Ray was arousing me in ways that James never did. I moaned with passion that I could never go back to James and his pathetic little body after all this that Ray made me feel. I knew at that moment that Ray was the one I truly desired and I made a decision to end things with James once and for all. As we continued to enjoy our time together, I felt a sense of liberation and excitement for what the future held with Ray by my side. We were tired and then fell asleep after all that passionate love. I got up in the morning full of bliss from last night. When I looked around to find Ray, he was nowhere to be found. I thought that maybe he was in the bathroom and turned around and went back to sleep. I woke up after some time and still had no sign of Ray. I was about to get out of bed when I noticed James sitting at the edge of the bed waiting for me. I was shocked to see him come home so early and the room was a mess while I was still naked. I knew that I was caught red-handed and there was very little I could do to get out of this situation. I knew that he had already understood what had happened here last night, and maybe he even met Ray and that was the reason he was missing. I quickly scrambled to cover myself and tried to come up with an explanation, but James just sat there in silence, his expression unreadable. I knew that I had some serious explaining to do and that this situation was going to be difficult to navigate. I waited for James to start the conversation as I had no clue when he got back. When James did not even say a word, I asked him the obvious question of when he got back home. He then started saying that he was back when I was enjoying my time in the bathtub with another man in a house that he had bought. He also heard the remark that I made about him and his body. He told me that if I hated him so much, then why was I even with him? Was it for the money that he earned? It was definitely not for our child, as I had already sent him away. I just wanted to use him for his money and enjoy it behind his back. I realized in that moment how selfish and manipulative I had been, using him for financial gain and taking advantage of his trust. It was a wake-up call for me to reflect on my actions and make amends for the hurt I caused. I also knew that he was the cause of all of this. I knew that at least now I should stand up for myself and tell him that all of this was his fault. If he had shown me a little more love and had been understanding of my feelings, then maybe I would not have been so desperate to find someone else who cared and loved me. I knew that everything was shattering, so there was no point holding myself back and letting James know exactly how he made me feel all these years so that he understood what I had been putting up with all these years. He was not a very easy person to live with. He always made sure to make me realize how small I was and how he was the one paying for all my comfort and luxuries and that I should be grateful for him. I finally mustered the courage to stand up for myself and express my true feelings, even if it meant potentially ending the relationship. It was a liberating moment of self-empowerment that I knew I needed to embrace for my own well-being. He laughed after I was finished and said that our marriage was just an agreement that we both had to honor. There was never love and we never expected that from each other right from the time that we were married. I was the one who started being more demanding of his time and affection as time went by, and he did not know how to deal with it. He started working extra hard to earn more money for my demands, and he did everything that he could to make sure that I had all the luxuries in the world, but I was still upset. He let me take charge of the house and the baby in my own way, without interfering, and still I was not happy. I then decided to make a complete change in my life and start working forgetting everything about him and our son. He still put up with all of my tantrums and did not ask me about why I was doing what I was doing. I was too shocked to listen to his thought process of how he made me look like a bad person in all of this. We had a very big argument where we both started throwing things and blaming each other for the things we had done in our marriage. He then told me that he had had enough of a selfish and ungrateful person like me and wanted me to leave his house immediately. He said that I had no right over anything that he had bought since it belonged to him. He demanded that I pack my things and leave, 
making it clear that our marriage was over. The hurtful words he said made me realize that our relationship had reached a breaking point. He mocked me that since my lover had a great body and was good at sex, maybe he will give me some place in his bed that too naked. I knew that there was no point in arguing with James right now. I called Ray, but his call went straight to voicemail. I did not know what to do, but I knew that I could not stay with James in the same room for even a single second now. I packed a bag and left the house, needing space to process everything that had just happened. As I drove away, tears streaming down my face, I knew that this was the end of my marriage to James. I kept trying to reach Ray while trying to figure out where I needed to drive to, but there was no answer. I wondered if James had threatened him or was he in some kind of problem that he was unavailable. I decided to drive to the gym and maybe try to find him there. I had no luck with Ray, so I crashed over at one of my colleagues' houses for the night. The next day at work, I was unable to focus thinking about the events from last night. I soon received a call from my son's boarding school that his bags were packed and when I was coming to pick him up. I was surprised at this sudden news and asked what had happened. They told me that his father had decided to take him out of school and that I would be coming to pick him up. I told them that it was a misunderstanding and to let him be at school. I quickly called James, who picked up after a few tries. I asked him why he was involving our son in all of these. He told me that he was not very sure if he was actually our son. I was baffled at his allegations. He wanted me to take care of my son on my own now that I had a job. He wanted nothing to do with me or my son. I did not really understand if I was dreaming or if this was happening for real. How could James just ditch his own son when he was actually having problems with me? I told him that it was definitely his son and he should not be dragging him into our mess. He asked me to come and sign mutual divorce papers which mentioned that I did not want anything from James and would never ever try to meet our son ever in life. I just wanted to go separate ways and have nothing to do with any of them. I couldn't believe how heartless James was being, but I knew I had to prioritize my own well-being and move on from this toxic situation. Signing those papers would be like the first step towards a fresh start for me with my lover, is what James told me. He said that no lover would want to get kids in their passionate sex life, which he was sure would not last for more than six months. I knew he was mocking me, but I also knew that right now, all I needed to do was think of a solution to keep my son at school. Ed I went to meet James at home and asked him what he wanted me to do so that we could start over again. He said that he does not like making the same mistakes again and again in life. All he wanted was me to be out of his life, which meant that I should be out of our son's life as well. He said that it was the only way he could take revenge from me. He knew that breaking this marriage would not affect me as much as not being able to see my son or talk to him, which was very true. That is exactly what he wanted from me, or else he was willing to ruin my son's life. I had no choice but to sign those papers to secure a bright future for my son. It was a difficult decision but I knew that sacrificing my own happiness was worth it to protect my son. Despite the pain of losing my husband, I had to prioritize my son's well-being above all else. I am sitting on a park bench with tears in my eyes writing this down. I knew that I needed to let this out so that I can make sense of what I just did. I might be judged for being a bad wife, which I don't mind, but I truly love my son. I have no idea how I can even imagine my life without him. I now realize that maybe I should have just stayed with James with all the insults he threw at me. At least then, I would still be able to see my son and talk to him. I am at a personal loss right now. I feel like I am going to lose my senses after such a drastic decision that I made. Maybe I could try harder and get back my son. He is old enough to choose to live with one of us. I don't know what to do anymore. My brain is shutting down and I feel like I have a rock on my heart. I need to find a way to communicate with James effectively and come up with a plan that prioritizes our son's well-being. It's important for me to stay strong and focused during this difficult time. At the same time, I also know that James would be able to provide him with a much better life than I ever could. Maybe I should just leave my son under James's care and start over. Thank you all so much for listening to such a long and boring story of my life. I know many people will judge me for not even being guilty of cheating on my husband, but it is true that I am not guilty about it. I am only guilty for leaving my son behind. I hope after reading all this, 
you all would understand what I had been through and why I did what I did. Hope to see some positives coming out of this post. Thank you again for taking time out to listen to me.